Crystal, what do you love about reading? I love reading a second book in the series. Okay. Because then you got the same characters, so you don't need to learn anybody's names. <laughs> <laughs> and if the story is awesome, then you just have a good time continuing the story. Yeah, I love that when that little, like, next book in the series just downloaded. When you pre-ordered something, it appears it is like getting mail. It is, and it's fantastic. I like mail. Well, everybody, welcome to the Goldilocks and the Three Cares podcast, where we take a look at a direct published work with what's too hot, what's too cold, and what's just right. I'm Andrew. And I'm Crystal. And Crystal, continuing with the theme that we started, we've read the second book in a series, haven't we? We have. We read The uh, World After. Okay. It's a the second book in the Penryn and End of Days series by Susan E. And we read that first book a couple weeks back, and... We're going to try to go deeper in this series, starting with book two, and when book three comes out, we'll read that one as well. Exactly. And tell me where this book picks up at after now. <laughs> after the first book, it picks up basically right where it ends off. Okay. So we have a big dramatic ending in book one, and book two, our um, our love interest, Penryn and Raffi. Uh, that's how I say his name, so if it's wrong... It's Rafe. I, I apologize. <laughs> it's French. <laughs> <laughs> they are separated. We have found Penryn's sister. I'm not going to say any more about that. But uh, Penryn is basically, again, just trying to keep her family safe. And now that the sisters are, are reunited, there's a new challenge in this book. There is a new challenge in this book. Um, Penryn finds or discovers that she sort of has a bit of a hero complex okay um not you don't find her none. discover that you announce that loudly <laughs> you just, <laughs> as you, you draw your sword <laughs> um despite the fact that she she doesn't really want to um she's sort of drawn into into that sort of action and she's uh she's basically just trying to take down the angels who are trying to hurt humans um at the same time missing Rafi and is trying to remember that he's also an angel as well and how does Penryn change from book one to book two? She's a little more assertive in her uh, in herself. Um, she's her her mom isn't quite all there, so she's okay. she is really the adult in the situation. Something terrible has happened to her sister, and while she's trying to take care of her family, she finds herself being sucked deeper and deeper into this trying to save more than just her family yeah, at the, the same time. The, the challenge of the reluctant hero who has to take on more. Exactly. And what was too hot? What was there too much of in this book? This sort of leads into nicely into our my first point of too hot in that, you know, Penryn is 17 years old. Only 17. She is. Maybe she turns 18 in this. I don't know. She doesn't know what day it is. Nobody knows where they are. <laughs> it's the end of days. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> it's difficult to celebrate your birthday when you're running from immortal gods. Yeah. You're probably not really thinking about yeah. that. Um, so she's 17 years old. And I just found that in the situations that she found, or in the main situation that she found herself in, in this book, um, not enough, which is really a prison. Yeah. Not enough people really step up and try and free themselves. And, you know, knowing that this is Penryn's story and it would be really, really boring if she was like, well, I'm just going to sit here in this corner. And you... I was I was the typist. <laughs> yeah. I, I For the just... person who was leading the charge. Oh, we're not free yet. I'm just going to yeah. sit back here. Thanks, guys. Yeah. And um... Warm up on the coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I wish that, you know, there would have been an adult in the situation yeah. trying to take charge or at least trying to start some sort of mob uh, mob thing. Yeah, that that's kind of the characteristic of young adult books, that the adults are largely useless. They are, yeah. yeah. And and in this case, there's a reason. You know, or evil. They're well, useless or evil. It, yeah, and when we have a child, that's how they're going to do. <laughs> useless you and are, evil. No. <laughs> Scratch that. All right, moving along. Um, you know... It's absolutely true. And in this case, she does have a mother who who is suffering from a mental illness, as mm. far as I know right now. I don't know if there's going to be anything bigger. Yeah, but that's that. that's one character. Like, there's yeah. she's, in an, she's in an adult world. There are adults around. 
and there's no one else to step up and go, hey, I, I've got a plan. Why, why do you have a plan? Well, you want to know what? I was a lieutenant colonel in the army. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know? Or, well, hold on. There's a 17 year old girl that has a, has a rebuttal to what we should do. Yeah. Like, or, you know, she, she saves a woman's, there is another woman that she is mm-hmm. sort of, um, connected to. So at this, at the same time, it's, it's weird reading these books and being an adult and having, yeah. seeing adults looking up to the 17 year old girl. Yeah. And, when I was 17, I, I'm i sure if I would have read this when I was 17, I would have been like, heck yeah, that girl knows what she's talking about. Whereas when I now, was 17, I would have missed the end of days because my alarm clock would have been going <laughs> off for like four hours straight as fire and brimstone rains from the heavens and I just keep hitting snooze for seven minutes. You'd wake up three months later. Because I'm 17. Yeah. And, and I find the way that authors usually get around that challenge of when you hold up a 17-year-old against you know adults, they, they often don't measure up. They just... They tend to just wrap them around other children, like Harry Potter. It's out of school. You yeah. Know, was it that well, Vampire Academy? It's out of school. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, Twilight. It's out of school. Exactly. Maze Runner. It's out of... Maze. Maze. It's out of school. <laughs> or you're going to run. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what you usually do is you, you kind of build that in so that it's like, okay, well, I can I can see this 17-year-old leading a bunch of other 17 and 16-year-olds, but this wasn't the choice here. Right, and and she does turn it into that she is trying to save her family, so it keeps coming back to that, so mm-hmm. it does make sense. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's all i got to say on that. <laughs> Let's move on. Moving on. Uh, tell me what was too cold. What was there not enough of? <clears throat> well. Well. Oh, you're, you're, what about, I find, you're about to gush, aren't you? <laughs> what I find in second books in a series yeah. is that, and actually, I'm no exception, you want to see the two love interests together yeah and you spend a lot of your time being like okay i'm reading this really quickly because i know they're going to see each other at the end and i really want to get there um and that's really a personal preference i would want to see them together um a little sooner the the love interests in this book just weren't they they had their own kind of plot lines they did which actually is really good because honestly if you're in love with someone and there's like People shooting at you, you're probably going to want to fix that situation first before you find them. Priorities. Them. Priorities, yeah. So, yeah. and, and really, I feel like this is a kind of weak too cold because it's, it's not a big enough deal to make me yeah. not like the book. Well, did, did, um, did you found it drew you in more? Like, there is something to be said about leaving people unsatisfied. Like, oh, for sure. And I think like you don't want to pile food on the plate and it's like, oh, they're in every third scene together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think while it's too cold, you know, they did end up together at the end. It's, it's more of a positive too cold, really, yeah. if you want to look at it that way, because there were elements of, hey, let's do flashbacks. Let's give you information about Rafi through other means which was done in a cool way and we'll talk about that later um and you're absolutely right you you kind of want to be a little unsatisfied because if they're too much together then eventually it's like a soap opera where you're like oh my god yeah can you please just like ross and rachel need to be on a break yeah like we we just gotta we gotta we understand it's very traumatic for you both so what did the author get right all of it. I think I said that the last time too. No. Um, you read this book how fast? I read it really quickly, probably the same amount of time that I read the first book, and yeah. and I was really disappointed that the third one's not out yet because I was ready to jump into. I the am third too. One. We have to read a different book for a podcast next I week. Know. Um, I really, you know, while it was too cold in that we didn't see the two love char- uh, characters who are in love together, the. The way that the author did flashbacks. So, uh, Rafi is an angel. He has a sword. He loses his sword and Penryn, uh, is able to lift it. So it's kind of like Thor's hammer in mm. that the sword lets her, her lift it for some reason. We don't know. Don't want to give away too much, but through the sword, she's able to have flashbacks and mm-hmm. see Rafi in a different way and see the same situations that happened in the first book, but from a different point of view. And so we get a, a good background of to what Rafi was thinking in those romantic moments that we only from, got from, from her. Earlier. Part. Yeah. So rather than do the old, remember when right. this happened, yeah, yeah. You, you had the sword pushing flashbacks from a different point of view. 
Exactly. That's so a really good way. It to was do that. another. Yeah, I thought that was fantastic because one of the things that bother me when you read a second book, especially so quickly after the first, is a lot of times there's a lot of backstory to explain what's happened in the first book. Yeah. And this book didn't do that, which I thought was it just moved forward. Was great, and I yeah. and I I like that approach regardless because I feel like if a book is a series, it's supposed to be read one after the other. Yeah. So. Like, like a, don't like try to movies, appease right? yeah. the people who are just like, why would you read the second book first? That's that's well, it's not just that. It's also, the, you know, you picking up the first book and picking up the second book. There was no time between them. But right. when San, excuse me, when Susan was writing them, there was a lot of time between them. So she probably had some feedback, some comments, and it, as an author, how do you? How do you stem the tide on comments on the first book when you're working on the next book in the series to prevent them from changing your vision? You just do your thing. Yeah. And I like I don't I don't yeah, I don't know if um I don't know if she had those flashbacks as a this is how I'm going to solve this problem and give you a bit of that romance, reminding you of what happened in the first book. Yeah. Um I personally thought it was a very clever way of, of doing that because it is quite difficult. How much is too much because you're going to bore the readers that have already read it mm-hmm. and how much is too little because we want you to enjoy it, enjoy the book. But I'm of the opinion that you, a series is a series. You have to read all the books, Yeah. at least the first one. I mean, Hunger Games, some people complain that there shouldn't have been the last two books. Well, you still have the first one. He's sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> some... People. Some people didn't think the last two books were necessary, and definitely some people didn't think it warranted more movies than books. Anywho, but, but these people <laughs> are innocent. Anywho, we'll 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 give you a cookie later for yeah, that one. Please. Um, so you know, I'm of the opinion that if it's a series, it's meant to be read from beginning to end. You wouldn't yeah. just jump in. So it's one book. You know, in kudos parts. to her for figuring out a way that made it really. Um, really easy for me to read having read the first one as well as um, you know doing a good job of of giving a bigger picture for what happened in the first book was there anything else you really liked in this one I I love the characters I think that they're all really strong they're all really different Um, the family theme has been tied through yeah we've got more answers because now instead of the sister it's now dealing with the mom and her illness right well a little bit more of of both because something terrible happens to the sister Spoiler alert. and uh and, and yeah so it's i really liked the theme and the message of what happens at the end and i honestly can't wait to see how it it finishes good so everybody that was world after which was book two in the penrin in the end of days series which again i would have slept through if i was 17 by <laughs> susan e not the book the actual no i can't sleep through the book the, sleep through the actual the end apocalypse. of days. the apocalypse the <laughs> yes. and the ground opens up and swallows civilization yes i would have been snoring yeah, when i was 17. 17. Uh, <laughs> where can we find this book crystal uh amazon is where i got it and uh go there yeah excellent where can you find us we are www.everythingstemporary.com yep youtube everything's temporary keep going facebook everything's temporary like two more twitter at everything's temp and, and we're also on itunes goldilocks and the three cares it's the only the, different one <laughs> from all of them and that about does it for this week everybody thank you very much for listening to the goldilocks and the three cares podcast if you liked what you heard tell a friend Tell a family member, get a plane to skywrite it. You want to know what that last one's a little bit excessive. Yeah. Get a plane to just fly a banner. Yeah. And, or, uh, <laughs> or subscribe. Those are your choices. Or, yeah. <laughs> or subscribe. <laughs> the plane rental subscription. Yeah. Well, subscription. One of them is a little bit easier. Do that one. Uh, I am Andrew. And I'm Crystal. Until next time, keep reading. You have to like groan like an old man when you sit down. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's one of those things where it's like you're an old man when you groan to sit down, and you're an older man when you groan to sit up.